here with uh, Nuri Bittachi, who is a writer and um, a judge for various literary prizes, also founded the Asia Literary Review, but currently is also the chairman of the biggest literary association in the Asia, in the Asia Pacific region. Thanks for being with me, Nuri. Oh, it's great to be here. Tell me, what this, this, um, this Asia Pacific Writers Association, association yeah. what exactly is it? Well, you know, the world, is, the world is changing very dramatically and people don't really realise uh, uh, how it's changing. Um, and Western Europe, which has dominated uh, the cultural scene so, for, so, for so long, uh, is, is no longer the dominant place. You know, Africa is rising, Asia is rising. And the scale of that change, I, I think people will be, will be amazed to see. Um, put it this way, in terms of culture, um, Think of your 100 best books, 100 best CDs, 100 best movies, and nearly all of them on any list you find will be the Western things, things from US, things from UK in particular. But where are the markets? Where are the consumers? The consumers are in Africa, the consumers are in Asia. And what percentage of the world's culture do these two uh, communities contribute? The answer is almost 0%. Mm. That's nothing. Uh, so. Uh, we can work out from that 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 is where the growth is going to be. It's going to be in, in, in books, movies, music from Asia and Africa. That's where the growth is going to be. Um, so uh, it's an exciting time to be in the creative industries in those parts of the world. You know. Eventually, and it's already happening, you know, the, the readers of the world are going to say, why are we reading translations of Harry Potter? You know? Or they'll pick up a book and it will start off with... Um, Bob played baseball in the backyard, and they'll think, what sort of name is Bob? What's a baseball? And who has a backyard? You know, and they'll, they'll want a story set in their own locality. So, uh, yeah, so there's a huge consumer market out there, and, uh, and we just got to get creative. So tell me, in terms of when you say it's a huge consumer market, have you got some numbers to back this up? What have you seen um, in your experience? Yes. Uh, I mean, for, for, a, for a simple number, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm based in Asia, and Asia is over 60%, close to 62% of the world's population lives in Asia. That's 4 billion out of the 7 billion people, you know. Um, and yet, we produce none of the world's culture, so obviously that's going to change. The Asian market is going to be the world's biggest market, you know. Uh, Africa's also big, but not as big, but these rising uh, consumer markets are going to dominate, so we need to create product that suits them rather than force them to take Western products. And is this part of the various things that you've been discussing as part of the Asian uh, Writers Association? Yes. Is this one of the sort of preoccupations of the last yes, meeting? Yes, yes. I mean, like, uh, one of the most controversial bits, and I know news people like controversial bits, <laughs> is that, uh, you know, the Pulitzer Prize and the Man Booker Prize, they always presented as being, you know, the top book prizes in the world, you know, and we say rubbish. Um, Pulitzer Prize is only for books in America, of American writers. The Man Booker Prize is only for, for British and former Commonwealth nations, and now they're thinking of adding America uh, to that. Um, so, but we've known for years, those can't be the top, the world's top book prizes if most of the world mm. is excluded by the rules. Uh, so, um, one of the things we're doing is launching an launching a, uh, international prize called the World Readers Award. And uh, to be eligible to enter, you just have to be human. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the human race is the only requirement. But You might have to have a book as yeah. well. But, well, you don't even need to have a book. You don't. Because there's an element of it which will be for unpublished manuscripts. Okay. So you can only just want to be a writer. Okay. And... Um, uh, when we first mooted this, we've been discussing it for a few months, uh, we wondered whether it would work. And one of the tests we gave ourselves is if we can get a, a real publisher to publish the manuscript, then it shows that it has value. Um, so we, um, we contacted real publishers and we said, look, we're going to have a prize global, uh, but we'll set a theme. So we'll, the book has to be set not in UK, not in US, it has to be set somewhere. Uh, else. Um, anyway, uh, uh, Penguin has agreed to publish the winning 
uh, the winning uh, text. So that's that's huge. Mm. You know, I think it's probably the most famous book publisher in the world. Mm. Uh, we handle through the Penguin North Asia operation. Um, but what does that show? It shows that people are starting to realise, hang on a minute, there's a big world outside the UK, there's a big world outside America, and, uh, and we better just take note of what's happening there. So are you seeing, um, uh, whether it be within the books, music, mm. film industry, are you seeing people that are sort of standing up to, to this challenge or who've noticed this trend that, mm. that as you said, is very kind of under, under-noticed at the moment? Yes. And mm gearing towards that market. Have you seen that starting to happen? It's starting, it's starting to happen. I mean, usually with, with less, less high, no, it's not highbrow products, like, well, let me give you some examples. You know, Disney has dominated animation from, from the time animation has, uh, was invented. But for a, for a brief year or so, Pokemon overtook Disney sales in the West. Pokemon was the biggest animation thing for a brief period. Uh, and um, you know, Asian animation is rising. Um, what else? Um, music. You know, the biggest YouTube hit for years was Justin Bieber. Then suddenly, it's a Korean singer yeah. singing <laughs> in Korean. You know, Oppa Gangnam Style. You know, what does that mean? You know. So um, yeah. So you can see Asian products. Once they get there, they're huge. Pokemon, massive, 15 billion US dollar. Uh, industry, uh, 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 Gangnam Style, huge, you know, you know, bigger than Justin Bieber on, on YouTube. So are there particular differences within this market that, say, people who wished to jump on a bandwagon would need to be taking note of? Cult- I mean, obviously, it's an entirely, we're talking different culture, different sensibilities, all sorts of things that are very different. I mean, for years, as you say, Asians have been asked to consume literature or, or music or whatever that's come from the West and now mm. as the tables turn are there things mm. that yeah. need to be taken into account in particular from your from what you've seen uh, yes yes um, th- there there are I mean obviously the Asian market has different appetites of the Western market the US market different needs but the Asian market is so big that there's a kind of principle that operates in the Asian market which we can call the um, we call it like the the no small number principle so, for example, uh, if you tonight wrote a story about um, Swan Lake ballerinas in training, okay, now you think, okay, people interested in ballet, ballet and people interested in Swan Lake, that's going to be a small number, right? But Asia is so big, four billion people, that even if one-tenth of one percent of people are interested in that, you've already got hundreds of thousands of people who are interested specifically in that. And that's enough to make your book a bestseller. You know. So how, how accessible, though, is this, is this enormous, huge market? Yeah. Um, well, that is a key question, really, is, is finding the distribution routes. And, uh, and, and those have never been easy. So uh, finding, finding the, the book or the, uh, the book distributor, publisher, or the, or the television channel that will get to this market is tricky. You know, like YouTube, for example, is banned in all of China. So you can't use YouTube. Uh, you can use it for the rest of the world, but not China. Um, you can't use Facebook in China. So the, one of the biggest clumps of this market is, you know, is, is, is hard to access. Um, I think one of the problems with creative people generally is that they focus on refining the product uh, 90% of the time, what they should really be thinking about is the market and distribution 90% of the time. Because, uh, I mean, sad but true, but, but a goodish product, well distributed, works better than a perfect product, which is not distributed which is well. And so, um, in the context of your work, have you been able to, I mean, you obviously write uh, books, and I've read some of your Feng Shui mm-hmm. detective novels, you. Um, have you been able to apply the sort of information that you that you have and also yeah. of your location since you are Asia based yeah. to um, mm. sales or, or and do you consider this market as you write? Two questions. Really. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, the, the Feng Shui Detective was first published uh, in Hong Kong and then, in, then it spread to uh, Australia next 
and then it went to the Western world, then it went into all the European languages, and went to America. Uh, but you can see that direct uh, direction is a piece of culture going from east to west. That almost never happens. Culture comes from west to east. So uh, uh, that was a, that was very gratifying for me. You know, cause I, I thought right, I can personally prove it. You know, I wrote a book and I wrote it here in Asia, and it's gone to the west and it's spread out over the west. So you can do it.